Hello everyone and welcome back. We're going to continue our study of JavaScript functions. This time we are going to add arguments to our functions and allow us to kind of give them superpowers because a function without an argument is oftentimes useful, but they're a million times more useful if you can give them inputs and then do something with those inputs. So to give you an example of this, let's write a function that, that will multiply a number by 10. So function times 10. And then here is our regular declaration, but if we want to use any inputs, we put them in here. So I might call it num. Function times 10, where num is the input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to console.log num times 10. So you'll see this name right here doesn't matter. I, you can call this anything you want. You could smash your fingers on the keyboard for a while. And as long as they're the same, it does not matter. It's a good idea to name them in a way that's understandable. But this this can be anything. This is just a variable, basically, a variable that's inside of this function. So now I have that function, and I can do times 10. And multiply 20 by times 10, you get 200. Very simple, very straightforward, and but that's how you do it in JavaScript. And there's no limit to the number of parameters or arguments or inputs, however you want to think of it, that you can put onto a function. So we might do function... Um, we'll call it multiply, have a b, and then you would return, or you would console.log a times b, and now multiply 8, comma, 32, whatever, and that's the output. So you'll notice that you just put the variable name, comma, the next variable name, comma, and you can continue that as many times as you want name, comma, name, comma, name, comma, name, comma. And then you just reference them by whatever they are here. So I multiply eight by 32. One thing to note is that the order of the variables matters. So we might do function minus, oops, I knew S, A, B, where we console.log A minus B. So now I have this function minus, so we might do minus 10 and three, should return seven. There we go. But if I do minus three and 10, it's gonna turn negative seven because the order matters. The first one will always be plugged in for the first one. The second one will always be plugged in for the second one. JavaScript does not have named function parameters like some other languages like Python does. So the order is what matters. In case you're not already somewhat familiar with functions, the purpose of these arguments and the, the reason that these arguments are so important is because they allow your functions to do so much more than they could without them. To give you an example, every website that you visit that has the ability for you to log in um, will take that user data and then build pages using that data. Like if you log into Reddit or Facebook or something, they're gonna build that page with the data that you put, data that you put in. The Facebook feed, for example, that's the same code for every person. Every single person who visits Facebook, the code that the, they're running is the same. However, the content on those pages is very different. The reason, the way that they make that work is that they have a function that takes input, such as the username and, and their user's friends and what the friends post, so on and so forth, so that they can display that. But that's the same code. And there are a couple more things about functions I want to talk about, function arguments. First off, if you include in your function declaration some arguments and you don't include the arguments when you call it, they will simply be undefined. So for example, minus, and I just put two, and I don't put a B and I hit return, it'll be not a number because you can't subtract undefined from two. To make it a little bit clearer, I might say function my function A, B, C, so I have this function, takes in three arguments and simply logs all three of them to the console. If I call my function with hi, I'm Josh, it logs all three of those to the console. However, if I just call it with number one, it logs one and then it logs undefined, undefined. It does not throw an error. That's important. Your function will still run. Your code will still run and work and be fine. It will simply run with these defined as undefined. Another thing you can do with your functions, and it's directly related to this, is that you can give the inputs default value. What that means is if your users don't supply data or if you don't supply data to that function, it will still run and it will do that with the default value. So let me redefine my function. 
and have A, if the user doesn't put anything in, A will equal hi, B will equal I'm, and C will equal Josh. And now I've redefined that function, and if I call my function, oops, I didn't capitalize correctly. I didn't put any parameters in there, but it still ran because I gave it defaults. However, if I put this in and give it parameters, yo, eyes, but I don't put the last one, it took the default value for the last one, and it put in whatever I did for the first two. So that's just something to keep in mind, that you can have default parameters, and this is very useful for code that you run a lot of times. And that's the basics of functions with parameters, or inputs, or arguments. The official term is parameters, but you'll hear me call them all three of those. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.